because to defend his mother's honor. Or Jesus turning water into wine. That is just a, a wedding. It's a wedding. So you think, you, you think it's honorable on the part of Jesus to turn water into wine? What does alcohol do today? Even in this country, a Christian country. He was just being like a human being. He came to, to a wedding of his friends and he was just doing what all of them. But my sister, if a person turns water into wine, is water good or wine good? All of them are good. What, water and wine? If you, if you want to enjoy yourself, you drink the wine. Yeah, but what does wine Especially do? Especially a wedding. Alcohol. What does alcohol do? Yeah, make you delirious. Yeah, uh, delirious. Yeah. So what Jesus is, is, is performing, uh, a water that is pure and wholesome, yeah. and he turns into something that's impure. You attribute this to Jesus as his first miracle? Or what about the miracle, the first miracle that Jesus performed according to the Quran to yeah. defend his mother's honor? Yeah, that's a good one. Exactly. This is beautiful. So we don't, re we don't disrespect Jesus, peace be upon him. We love him. We respect him. We revere him. But we don't deify him, as the brother mentioned, because you are taking, you know, lords besides the creator. You know, why don't we worship God alone? This is the, this is the message of all the prophets. That we have not sent a messenger to, the, to, the, to every nation, but to say, worship Allah and do not associate partners with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the Muslims to speak to you. Say, all oh, people of the book, Jews and Christians, that let's come to common agreement. Muslims are Christian, us too. Yeah, I'm a Muslim, you're a Christian. Let's come to common agreement. What's the first agreement? That we worship none but Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. But are we really worshiping him the way how he deserves? No, because what do Christians do? You associate Jesus with God. But Jesus is a creation of God. Do you understand? Yeah. He's, a, he's a servant of God. Yeah. He's not the son of God in the sense that, you know, if you say son of God in the sense that he was a righteous person, yeah. I've got no problem with that. I've got no problem. However, we don't advise to say son of God. Why? Because it has negative connotation. How can Catholic, Catholics call mother of God? This is blasphemy. Imagine, imagine the mother of God is carrying God inside. It doesn't befit his majesty. So Jesus, peace be upon him, he came with the same message that all the prophets came with, which is worship Allah, do not associate any partners with him. And Jesus, peace be upon him, says in the Quran that whoever associate partners with Allah, فَقَدَ حَرَّمَتَ عَلَى جَنَّةً right? That paradise is forbidden for him. Paradise is forbidden for him. Because, let me ask you this question. And this is an example that Brother Shamsi always uses, mashallah tabarakallah, right? If I was to give you two million pounds, yeah. What would you say to me? Just go and buy a house. <laughs> no, 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 if I was to give you two million pounds. I'd say thank you. Thank you. And you'll never forget me, right? No, no, no. Because two million pounds is a big offer, right? It will change your life. Yeah. But now I'm going to change the condition. I'll give you two million pounds on the condition that you give me your two eyes. Would you ever accept it? No, why? Because you value your two eyes more than two million pounds. Yeah, so yeah. why don't we be grateful to the one who gave you two eyes for free? But what do you Christians do? You say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all the blessings. Jesus didn't give you the blessings. Who gave you the blessings? The Father. Jesus, people, when he was on earth, who kept him alive? The Father. Didn't Jesus used to eat? Yeah? Does, does God eat? No, God doesn't eat. Why? Because he's self-sufficient, a summer. He's self-sufficient. He doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need to depend on anything. But Jesus, people, when he was on earth, he used to eat. And this is a powerful argument from the Quran in chapter 5 verse 75 that look at the Messiah and his brother. They both used to eat. We made the signs clear to them, yet they turn away. What does that show you, my sister? That God, show God just make all this so that we are all divided. So that we worship him. We, you know, since the But are you worship Babel. but are you worshiping him alone? That's the question. Because we Muslims, we don't worship Jesus. We don't worship Muhammad. We don't worship Allah's creation. Rather, we worship the Creator. Unfortunately, the Christians, what do you say? Jesus is God. You are, you are, sorry? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. What do you mean by Lord? Well, he's uh, higher than everybody else. But is he higher than God? No. Okay. So if you're going to say Lord in the sense that he's our, he's our master, he's our teacher, I've got no problem with that. Because Jesus, peace be upon him, was a teacher to the children of Israel. Yeah, he was a prophet of God. He was an example to the to Israelites. So we've got no problem with that. But when you say Lord now, what do you associate with the, with the title Lord? He's divine. And this, you know that Jesus is not divine, correct? He is divine. 
How, okay, how can it be divine when God, let, can we agree something? God by definition, he's all powerful, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what does all powerful mean? Power over everything. Power over everything. Power, power over everything. So when Jesus was on earth, according to the Bible, when he was stripped naked and when he was beaten, does that show he was all powerful? Um, taking our sins away. No, no, no. He died for our sins. That's 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 nothing to do with the question. The question is, if G if God is all powerful, as we agree, and he and you def you define all powerful meaning he has power over everything. Did Jesus show power over the Romans? Was he beaten? He didn't want to show power. I'm sorry. His father sent him to be. I know, but can you imagine God being beaten up and stripped naked? Exactly. So you can't attribute this to Jesus. You understand? Just pray to God. Exactly, directly. Why? But that does not mean, when you become a Muslim, that does not mean you stop believing in Jesus. Because no Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. That is one of the articles of our faith. We have six articles of faith. One of them is to believe in Risala, the messengership. To believe Rusuli, all the, all the messengers. So if somebody say, I believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him, but I disbelieve in Jesus, he's not even a Muslim. And by the way, there's a hadith, a Sahih hadith, of the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, he said, that if a Jura Christian heard my message and they say that there's none worthy to be worshipped except Allah and Muhammad is messenger of Allah and Jesus is the messenger of Allah, then you get double the reward, correct? Imagine this, we don't get that privilege. You can. You don't abandon Jesus. When you accept Islam, you don't abandon Jesus. Rather, you, you are following the message of Jesus, peace be upon him. So what's stopping you to become a Muslim? Honestly speaking. Muslim, you shouldn't drink, you shouldn't eat pork, you shouldn't dance, you shouldn't, uh, you should cover up. That is what's stopping people becoming Muslim. So when God gives you the laws, would you not follow it? Yeah, but okay. it's hard. It's a hard, it's a hard, hard task. Okay. Becoming a Muslim. So when it, okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned these type of people. He said, do you not see the one who takes his desires as his own God? Imagine people follow their desires. And let me tell you one thing, my sister. There is a scholar by the neighbor Ibn Qayyim. May Allah have mercy on him. He said that if anyone loves or attaches anything other than the creator, that thing which they love, it will fade away. You see, one day you may love your, you may love your mother, you may love your father, you may love your children, but they're all going to go. But who's not going to leave you alone? God. God. So is he not worth it to be worshipped? Is he not worth it to be obeyed? So, let me... so, so why aren't you friends with the Jews? Why aren't we friends with the Jews? Just because of land. No, 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 my sister. It's the land, isn't it? My sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us how to treat with our fellow human beings. We should show them respect. However, there's exceptions. If there are people that are wages war against Islam, then we're going to fight. Yeah, we're not pacifists. But however, we show justice. Allah mentioned the Quran in Surah Al-Muntahina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Allah does not forbid you. Allah does not forbid us, Muslims. Allah does not forbid us from being just to the non-Muslims. As long as they don't fight you based upon your religion. Allah loves those who are just. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, does not tell us, you know, treat the Jews bad, treat the Christians bad. No. If they are going to wage war against Islam, we're gonna we're gonna fight. But however, what does Allah say in the Quran all the time? If they want to reconcile with you, give them peace. Peace is better. That's good. Yeah? So my sister. Exactly. Exactly, my sister. So, my sister, what is stopping you from accepting Islam? Because it makes sense to you that Allah is only worth to be worshipped. God is only worthy to be worshipped. You should not associate your partners with Him. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came to confirm the same message. The same message. If you want to become a Muslim, where do you go? You just have to say the Shahada, testimony of faith. Would you like to become a Muslim? Or you go to the mosque? No, no, no. You can get, you can declare your faith right now. Really? Yeah. Do you want to? Okay, my sister, look into Islam, look into Islam, look into the message that Muhammad peace be upon him came with. Yeah, he didn't, he did not come here to contradict, you know, the, the, the message of the previous prophets. He came with the same message that Jesus came with, which is, which is to worship Allah alone, not to associate any partners with him. And he's the last and final messenger. Look into his claim. He's a messenger. I'll tell you why he's a messenger of God. In Mecca, at the time of the prophet peace be upon him. You don't have to be in the camera, no problem. You can stay where you are. At the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the 7th century Arabia, there were no Jews and Christians in Mecca. No Jews and Christians in Mecca. Now, you know that the Arabs and the Jews, they were enemies to each other, correct? They don't like each other, the Arabs and the Jews, right? They don't like each other. I want to ask you this question. If Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
if he wasn't if he wasn't a messenger of God, what he could have easily said is, disbelieve in Jesus, disbelieve in the Jewish prophets, because it because it favors the, the Quraysh, right, the Arabs. But why did Muhammad, peace be upon him, told the Quraysh to believe in the Jewish prophets? Why? What was his motive? What was his motive? He's an Arab. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is an Arab, correct? There were no Jews and Christians in Makkah. No Jews and Christians. If he if he wants his people to accept the message that he came with, why is he asking his people to accept Jesus, to accept Solomon, David? What's the motive? I know, but from but but if Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, I know, my sister. If Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him wants people to accept his message, why would he ask him to accept the message of the Jewish prophets? No, what was peace? What's the motive? Do you know what easily the Prophet Muhammad could have said, look, you don't have to believe in Jewish prophets, you don't have to believe in Jesus. You don't have to believe in Moses. Just accept on the Messenger of God. No. Why? Because the Quran mentions that this is a revelation from Almighty God. He had no choice. He did not speak from his desire. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's telling his people, you know, accept, accept the Jewish prophets, accept Jesus, accept Moses. Do you really think that the Arabs would accept what he's saying? No. What's his motive? Also, the Jews, the Prophet, uh, the Jews were waiting for the Prophet in Arabia. If he wanted to convince the Jews to accept his message, why is he asking them to believe in Jesus? You do know Jesus considered uh, Jews considered Jesus a false Messiah, correct? A false Messiah. Yeah, Jews. Yeah. Why did Muhammad Sallallahu if he wants to convince the Jews to accept Islam, why doesn't Muhammad just say, look, Jesus is a false Messiah? But no, what, what does Muhammad people want? He does not speak from his own desire. He's only getting revelation from God that no, you Jews, he's not a false messiah, he's a true messiah. So what was his motive? If he was lying. So he was speaking the truth, correct? So if he's speaking the truth, isn't he a messenger of God? So, so if, you, if you accept... Islam and Muhammad as well. So would you like to become a Muslim? You just have to declare your faith. You're actually a Muslim, my sister. If you just believe it, my sister, all you need to say, my sister, my sister, all you need to say is that there's none, there's no baptism, anything like that. No. As long as you're a Muslim, alhamdulillah, but you just have to declare your faith. You say there is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of God and Jesus is the messenger of God. Do you want to, do you want to take the shahada? My sister. Okay then, my sister, look at it. Asalaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I trust you're doing well. So the previous brother, may Allah bless him, uh, you know, he was off the camera, but mashallah, he was giving a beautiful dawah to the sister here. And uh, you can see that the Christian sister, she's, uh, she knows that Islam is true, alhamdulillah. We try to, you know, um, encourage her to take shahada, but at the end of the day, you can't force people, you know, to accept Islam, it's from their own will. But we encourage the sister, we asked her, to, you know, to look into the message of Islam, to look into the, uh, to the message of Allah, sallallahu and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her. Uh, guide her. I mean, Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.